Are you constantly on the hunt for a reversible stitch that doesn't curl and has wonderful drape? Fisherman's Rib is the stitch that has it all, believe it or not, making it a top stitch in my book. With only two rows to repeat, Fisherman's Rib is as easy as a traditional rib stitch, but with a little twist. So the next time you're in the mood to try something new and interesting, there are a couple different ways to work this stitch, but here's how I like to do it. Cast on an odd number of stitches, and the first row is a simple setup row. Just knit all stitches. I'm using a bulky two-ply yarn for this example, but Fisherman's Rib works really well with all sorts of yarn textures and colors. After making a variety of experimental swatches, I found that the sweet spot, as far as easy knitting goes, was actually a bulky weight yarn that paired with a six and a half millimeter needle. It's also no surprise that a lightly textured yarn, like this one for example, draw the attention away from the stitch pattern and make it a little less pronounced. And the same is true for mosaic yarns and those with short color transitions like these two. The eye is drawn more towards the color and thus the pattern is less noticeable. That's not to say you can't use any yarn you want though. It really all depends on the look you're going for. I will say though, it was a tad easier to knit this stitch with a tightly plied yarn because the yarn doesn't split as readily like a roving yarn or a lightly plied yarn. All right, the first row in the repeat starts here. Purl the first stitch and knit into the stitch below. So this spot right here. And repeat, purl one, knit one below. Keep going until you have only one stitch left in the row. Now it's a good idea to be mindful of your tension when passing the yarn backward and forward as you work this particular row. If your stitches are starting to look a little wonky, this could be why. All right, then purl the last stitch. Now turn, and we're starting the second row in the repeat. This time, knit the first stitch, and knit one again. Then knit into the stitch below. Similar to what we did before, but it looks different on this side of the work. So one little tip I have for you here is to use one of the sharpest pairs of needles that you own. It really does make it a little easier to get the needle into these below stitches without splitting the yarn. And I would especially recommend it if you're using a roving yarn or a two ply yarn like this, just while you're figuring things out and getting the hang of it. So at the end of this round, you'll have two stitches left and you'll knit them both. As you work through these last two rows for the length of your project, you'll notice it takes several rows for the pattern to emerge and look decent, so that's normal. The further your stitches are from the needle, the more they can relax and look a little more like the pattern should. Although it looks the same on both sides, I tend to deem the even numbered rows the right side because the cast on and bind off edges look a little neater. If you notice it feeling a little clumsy knitting into these lower stitches, honestly, you're in good company. After knitting 10 or so rows though, you'll really start to find a rhythm, so just power through it. Here's another look at the needle placement using a chunky weight yarn so you can see what I'm doing a little better. And on the topic of tips, here are a few more I have to help you memorize this stitch. When you turn the work and you see a knit here on the edge, this is how you know you'll need to start a row three. So knit the first two stitches, then knit one below, and follow up with your regular row three repeat. When the row starts with a purl though, that's how you know it's a row two, and you should purl one, then knit one below. In many cases, it's perfectly okay to use the recommended needle size on your yarn label if you aren't following a pattern or anything like that. 
For Fisherman's Rib though, I found that going one size bigger almost always was the better choice. Now I can't set you on your way without mentioning the biggest downfall to Fisherman's Rib. It's pretty hard to tink if you make a mistake, but please don't let that deter you from trying this stitch. There's a really simple workaround. So as you're working your project or practicing your swatches, have some scrap yarn and a yarn needle handy. Every few inches or so, feed the yarn through the live stitches and then just keep knitting as if that little lifeline is not even there. And when you knit up a few more inches, pull it out and feed it back through the new live stitches. This is called a lifeline and it's incredibly useful for complex stitch patterns or stitches like this where ripping back just isn't easy. With a lifeline in place, you can remove the needles and rip back to where the lifeline is and use that as guidance to feed the needle back through the stitches. So you're not losing the entire project. Just what you've knit since your lifeline. When you're ready to bind off, you can do so a number of different ways and get a really similar result. But I like to bind off after finishing a second row. This tends to look a little neater and it matches the knit row at the starting edge. Start by knitting the first two stitches, then pass the first loop over the last, knit the next stitch, and pass the first loop over the last. Now if you'd rather knit one below, like you've been doing for the rest of your pattern, you can do that too, but it really looks very similar, just knitting regularly. Whatever you prefer though. The stitch looks pretty good right off the needles, but it never hurts to finger block the starting edge or wet block the entire project if you have the time to do so. The simplicity, yet still pretty fun to knit quality of the Fisherman's Rib makes for a project that's just that, simple but fun to knit. It's an excellent choice for scarves and blankets, and you can improvise either one of these projects without even having a pattern. Just remember to start off with an odd number of stitches on your cast on but it also creates a squishy fabric with loads of bounce, so it has a wonderful drape for clothing projects too. If you think this stitch is great, you'll probably also love the single color brioche stitch used in this quick and easy project. So check that out next if you want. Happy knitting, and I'll see you in the next one.